The bradycardia algorithm outlines the steps for assessment and management of a patient presenting with symptomatic bradycardia with a pulse. Implementation of this algorithm begins with the identification of bradycardia, which is a heart rate less than 50 beats per minute. Once bradycardia has been identified, first steps include the components of the BLS assessment and primary assessment, such as supporting circulation and airway management, giving oxygen, monitoring the rhythm and vital signs, establishing IV access, and obtaining a 12-lead ECG if available. The primary decision point in the algorithm is determining whether the bradycardia is causing the patient's signs and symptoms or some other illness is causing the bradycardia. These symptoms include hypotension, acutely altered mental status, signs of shock, ischemic chest discomfort, and acute heart failure. If the patient has adequate perfusion, observe and monitor. If the patient has poor perfusion, administer atropine. Classified as an anticholinergic drug, atropine is effective for the treatment of certain types of bradycardia. For example, if the vagus nerve stimulates the heart, the patient's heart rate will slow. Atropine blocks the action of the vagus nerve, causing the heart rate to increase. If atropine is ineffective, prepare for transcutaneous pacing or consider dopamine or epinephrine infusion. Transcutaneous pacing, or TCP, uses electrodes on the patient's chest to deliver an electrical impulse that overrides the normal pacemaker functions of the heart. In effect, TCP provides an external pacemaker signal. Dopamine stimulates the beta-1 adrenoceptors, resulting in improved myocardial contractility, increased sinoatrial node rate, and enhanced impulse conduction in the heart. If the patient doesn't respond to atropine, TCP, dopamine, or epinephrine, seek expert consultation, prepare for transvenous pacing, and search for and treat contributing causes. Bear in mind that the treatment sequence in the algorithm is determined by the severity of the patient's condition. You may need to implement multiple interventions simultaneously. If the patient goes into cardiac arrest, go to the cardiac arrest algorithm. The tachycardia algorithm simplifies initial management of tachycardia. The presence or absence of pulses is considered key to management of a patient with any tachycardia. If pulses are present, determine whether the patient is stable or unstable, and then provide treatment based on the patient's condition and rhythm. If a pulseless tachycardia is present, manage the patient according to the cardiac arrest algorithm. Implementation of this algorithm begins by verifying the presence of a pulse with the tachycardia. Most symptomatic tachyarrhythmias will present with a heart rate of 150 or more beats per minute. If a tachycardia and a pulse are present, maintain a patent airway and assist breathing as necessary. Provide oxygen if hypoxemic and monitor cardiac rhythm, blood pressure, and oxygen saturation. The tachycardia is unstable if the patient demonstrates rate-related cardiovascular compromise with signs and symptoms such as hypotension, acutely altered mental status, signs of shock, ischemic chest discomfort, and acute heart failure. Immediate synchronized cardioversion is indicated. If time permits, establish IV access before cardioversion and administer sedation if the patient is conscious. However, don't delay cardioversion if the patient is extremely unstable. Synchronized cardioversion uses a sensor to deliver a shock synchronized with a peak of the QRS complex, the highest point of the R wave. Synchronization avoids the delivery of a shock during cardiac repolarization, a period of vulnerability in which a shock can precipitate VF. Synchronized cardioversion is usually successful at lower energy levels than required for defibrillation. Check to make sure the synchronized marker is located on the R wave before clearing and cardioverting the patient. On the other hand, if the patient is stable, the treatment path is determined by whether QRS is wide or narrow, and whether the rhythm is regular or irregular. If a monomorphic wide complex rhythm is present and the patient is stable, expert consultation is advised because treatment has the potential for harm. The therapy for narrow QRS with regular rhythm is to attempt vagal maneuvers and, if unsuccessful, administer adenosine. Adenosine slows electrical conduction through the AV node and terminates approximately 90% of re-entry tachyarrhythmias within two minutes. 
Although it doesn't terminate atrial flutter or atrial fibrillation, it will slow AV conduction, allowing for identification of flutter or fibrillation waves, thereby allowing confirmation of the underlying tachyarrhythmia. If the rhythm converts with adenosine, it's most likely re-entry SVT. Observe for recurrence. Treat recurrence with adenosine or longer-acting AV nodal blocking agents, such as the non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers or beta blockers. Typically, you should obtain expert consultation if the tachycardia recurs. Adenosine should not be given for unstable or for irregular or polymorphic wide complex tachycardias because it may cause degeneration of the arrhythmia to VF.